Hello, everyone, and welcome to Digital Journeys. Today, in part two, we are joined by Jim Holman and John Schrader, who will discuss the importance of system integration. So with that, I turn it over to Jim. Thanks for joining me today, John, in part two of this series. Great to be back with you, Jim. You had mentioned integration tools before, and I know that there's a lot of, again, more uh, acronyms and alphabet soup of different types of tools, but can you take us through what the common or typical types of integration tools are available and how do they integrate or connect to certain current software systems? Yeah, system integration can really occur at multiple layers. So let me try to explain. For the most part, software systems have databases as the basis for storing data. Traditionally, integrations have occurred at this foundational database layer meaning like queries or store procedures are written to extract data from the system's database or insert data into that database directly. So this is a pretty dangerous and tedious work to not impact operational stability of that system by changing its underlying data, not to mention a security concern allowing someone access to this deep level of, of your information. So most modern software have what's called application programming interfaces or APIs available to get data in and out of, of any system. And this is the preferred way of system integration and the best way to maintain the integrity of system data within any software. And so it, it is because that software exposes how it wants you to interact with it and the software maintains the necessary business logic around its own data. So these APIs are typically exposed through secure web services. Um, and so this would be our preferred method of system integration. And then the last is there's the user interface layer of integration. This is typically used if API level or database level integration is not available. So UI level integration is done using automation tools that mimic a user or send keyboard commands to the software's user interface. This is typically called robotic process automation or RPA for short. It's been a recent buzzword, but this type of integration, in my opinion, is very unstable and only should only be used as a last resort because user interfaces are the most often piece of software that changes and so it can change and may break the UI layer integration. So database level, API layer, UI layer integration, there's different layers of integration um, and so now that I've kind of explained the high level of, uh, you know, differences between the integration options, I would say there's a few, uh, quite a few system integration platforms out there. So integration platforms as a service, there's kind of point to point or custom development integration. And then, like I said, robotic process automation. So Jim, I know you and I have done a lot of work in the integration platform as a service area. And some of the platforms that we've used and uh, use internally are things like Work Auto or MuleSoft, um, some of the other platforms as a service. But these platform as a service are subscription-based, cloud-based, API-focused, you know, platforms in and of themselves, and really have key areas that can really benefit any organization. One would be out-of-the-box connectors. A lot of these integration platform as a service tools come out of the box with a lot of connectors to a lot of industry standard you know, practices or industry standard softwares. And then they can also transform data and eliminate any duplicates. Um, so part of the extract, transform, and load, they can actually do data transformation uh, between the two different systems. And platforms allow for citizen development uh, for the for the data mapping. So, you know, you don't have to have an advanced PhD programming degree to do some of the data mapping using these platforms. And then some of the tools like Work Auto allows for replays um, right. of of different integrations and and processes. So, just neat to be able to support it and replay a certain transaction that may have failed. Um, Secondly is point to point, so kind of custom developed API and, and database approaches. So direct integration into database or, uh, you know, kind of point to point. 
The, the problem with point-to-point -point integration is that you have a different solution for each integration and you don't have a common language used across the, the different systems. And so also don't recommend database layer uh, integration just because you know it's it's risky and and be a security breach and then obviously a robotic process automation is as i mentioned kind of last resort the ui layer integration right i've, I've had my own uh in my career direct database integrations that have just gone wrong uh, so badly not not only that uh something unpredictable but how vulnerable they get for system upgrades and things that you're not expecting that cause those integrations to misbehave and uh, you know, not realizing the extent of the damage that integrations can cause. Yeah, I've had uh, experience in a, in a previous life uh, where we did some database changes and it rendered the entire ERP platform unusable. <laughs> it crashed you know, the, the sales process within the ERP platform. So database layer integration is not recommended for that for reasons like that right and something you had mentioned john about the whole uh citizen development uh, another it's not say so much a buzzword is truth is these some of these ipass platforms they're called low code or no code and really leveraging um say business analysts as opposed to developers that can drag and drop fields from uh, one connector, as you mentioned, a lot of out-of-the-box connectors. So if an iPaaS platform knows, for example, Shopify, and it knows, for example, Dynamics Business Central, mapping a customer from one system to a customer in the other doesn't require coding. It only requires, say, coding or some light scripting. If, for example, you want to put a C on the front of the customer in Business Central, from what comes over from Shopify. So there's some great opportunities to take it down a notch and be less dependent on uh, uh, the uh, IT nerds like you and I are. So uh, <laughs> that's right. Thank you for your time today, John. In part three, we will look at other important areas of system integration. Thank you, Jim and John, for the discussion today. We appreciate your insights on system integration. As always, feel free to like and share this podcast. Stay tuned for part three of this series.